Holy One, we gather as a people of faith and no faith, as a people of hope and no hope, as a people of peace and no peace, as a people of joy and no joy. We gather with a longing following months apart, wandering in the wilderness to be made whole again, if just for this time here and now. We gather with a prayer, however vague and tenuous, that in spite of the absence of angels, wise men, and shepherds, we might still be witnesses to the birth of all love, and love may then again be born within us. So we gather, a weary yet hopeful people, for this story of faith and love to unfold around us and within us. Amen. Good morning, Stone Village, and happy Sunday. Happy first Sunday of Advent. I hope that all of you are well and safe in this world. All is well in my world. The Lord be with you, and let us pray. Holy One, guide us by the light of your prophets. Illuminate our hearts and open our minds that we might hear and respond to your call and become a path of light in the world. In the name of the Christ child, we pray. Amen. The reading today is from Matthew chapter 24, verses 36 through 44. But about that day and hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only God. For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day Noah entered the ark, and they knew nothing about the flood until it came and swept them all away. So too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field, one will be taken, and one will be left. Two women will be grinding mill together, one will be taken, one will be left. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you must also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> but about that day and hour, no one knows. Jesus says, I hear those words and I recall days and hours about which I did not and could not know. The day and hour I left King Avenue to build Stone Village. The day and hour I became a chaplain. The day and hour one of my beloved boys, dogs, returned to God. The day and hour I bought my home. The day and hour I ended a relationship. The day and hour I knelt before Bishop Palmer and was ordained. The day and hour my grandparents died. The day and hour the world went into lockdown. The day and hour I was lost and confused in my life, and I thought I had everything I needed. The day and hour about which we do not know comes to us in a thousand different ways. It comes to us as an unexpected gift, an unwanted loss, an unimagined future, a dream come true. Regardless, we had no way of knowing when, how, or if it would come. And we had no way of knowing what it would bring. And despite our best efforts, 
to plan and prepare for the future. We live in the midst of uncertainty and unknowing. There are days and hours that take us completely by surprise in some good ways and in not so good ways. I wonder about yours. What was the day and hour that took you by surprise and caught you off guard? What happened on that day and in that hour that you never expected, wanted, or could have imagined? How did you manage? How did you navigate? How did you survive? And finally, how were you changed? Contrary to popular belief, Advent isn't just a liturgical season when we prepare for and await the birth of the Christ child. No, you see, Advent is about that day and hour of uncertainty and not knowing. It describes our life, the fragility of life, the ever-changing nature of life. And Advent always begins with the day and hour about which we do not know. It is both unforeseeable and unpredictable. It comes, Jesus says, like a thief in the night or a great flood. And so every year on the first Sunday of Advent, the gospel offers an ominous and threatening story. We learned types who have been to Jesus' school call these apocalyptic narratives, foreshadowing of the world's end. And that's how it often feels when life is uncertain, the future is unpredictable, and we are powerless to control what comes next. However, in today's gospel story, Jesus never says that the world is ending. He doesn't. I've read it a few times over the years. And so what's he speaking to? I believe he's speaking to how we live and navigate this ever-changing world, our ever-changing lives, because nothing is static. It is all transient. And today's story is characterized by change and uncertainty. It begins with the day and hour about which we do not know, and it ends with the unexpected hour. And everything in between is about not knowing. Jesus speaks about not knowing five times. We do not know the day, the part of the night, or the hour in which it, whatever it is, will happen. What we do know is that it, whatever it is, happens in the ordinariness, the mundaneness of life eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, working in the fields and grinding meal. Which leads me to wonder if we've misunderstood what apocalypse is really about. What if apocalypse is not about some unknown day in the future, but about today and every day? Maybe every day is an apocalypse. Maybe we are always living in apocalyptic times. <laughs> Yikes. Look at the world today. Read the news. If there is a theme, it is uncertainty, not knowing, a feeling of chaos and powerlessness. So what if... The apocalypse is not about the grand finale, the end of the world, but about living in the midst of uncertainty and unknowing, living with the unpredictability of the future, living in the midst of chaos. So 
The question then is not about the end of the world, but about how we live with uncertainty, not knowing, and powerlessness. What does faithfulness look like in those times? How do we live in the midst of ever-changing life? And where is our center on that day and hour? The challenge of Advent, of that day and hour, about which you do not know, is to cultivate, I believe, what the poet John Keats phrased, negative capability. Negative capability is the ability to sustain uncertainty, to live with not knowing, to stand in mystery, to keep the questions and possibilities open, to embrace ambiguity, and to do all this without running away and trying to escape one's life. You got it? Negative capability. And I believe this is what Jesus is speaking to when he says we are to keep awake and to be ready. Because life is fragile. Life is fading. Life is constantly fluctuating. So be present to and for the unfolding of your life. There is no set script for your journey. Of course, Advent days and hours, although unpredictable and unknown, can at first seem to diminish life. But on the contrary, they intensify life. They heighten life's value. They deepen life's meaning. Advent days open us to life and more life. Because everything matters. All of it. The good and the bad. The known and the unknown. The expected and the unexpected. And when nothing is certain, anything is possible. Thanks be to God. Amen. I give thanks to God for each of you, and I pray this day you bear witness to the love of God in this world. Bear witness to the love of God, so those to whom love is a stranger, they will find in you a generous and loving friend. In the name of Christ Jesus, and the power of the Holy Spirit, amen. I love you, stoners. I hope you have a lovely day. And as a reminder, uh, when this video, reflection, post, uh, Stone Village uh, will be... Uh, 60 minutes away uh, from its first public worship service at 10 a.m. We will be offering public worship every Sunday of Advent at 10 a.m. And then two Christmas Eve services, the first at 10 a.m. and the second at 7 p.m. If you have any questions about any of that, you know how to reach me. So again, I love you. Have a lovely day. I'll see you soon. Bye.